Today's lecture is presented through the platform of our channel Pharmacology Notes and the topic is delivered by registered pharmacist Rumaira Shaheen, the gold medalist. Today's topic is non-selective beta blocker. As we have discussed in the last lecture about propranolol, that propranolol decreases cardiac output, it decreases the, which causes negative chronotropic action, negative inotropic action, diminishes the ability of SA node, AV node, and thus it is used in cardiac arrhythmias. Then we have talked that propranolol will decrease the blood supply to the peripheries, to the GIT, to the uh, skin, to the regular glomerular apparatus, and to the skeletal muscles. Then propranolol also retains the sodium in fluid in the body and then come towards the disturbance in the glucose metabolism. That's how propranol disturbs the glucose metabolism. In the skeletal muscles, what the normal pathway occurs is that when we have taken the food and the glucose goes into skeletal muscle, this glucose is stored in the form of glycogen. This glucose is converted into glycogen and stored in the body and whenever we, our body needs glucose, then this glycogen will be again converted into glucose and this can be used by the body. Now this conversion of glycogen into glucose is termed as glycogenolysis. Glycogenolysis means conversion of glycogen again into glucose and this glucose will be supplied to the blood and then this glucose will be used for energy. What, hap what happens in the case of propranolol? And the receptors present here are beta 2 receptors which are functional here. So propranolol will block these beta receptors, it will cause blockage and thus no glycogen will be converted to glucose means it's lost glycogenolysis. No glycogenolysis, no glucose formation, no glucose in the blood. So there will be diminished the glucose supply to the blood. So there in the glucose as the glucose decreases in the blood, as glucose decreases, in the blood, so we have to take care that in case of the patient with, uh, with hypoglycemia, means the patient with, patient with diabetes, we have to monitor this glucose level in the blood. So is it clear that how the propranolol disturbs the glucose metabolism in our body? So extra word that when cardiac output decreases, it causes the SA node activity decrease, disturbance in glucose metabolism, decrease the peripheral blood vessels, Vessel construction and in the bronchial construction also. So, what is the pharmacokinetics? How this drugs act? From propranolol is given orally mostly, and propranolol have good absorption because it is a lipophilic drug. It is lipophilic in nature, so have good absorption. But the one thing is it has high first pass effect. When given orally, then just 25% of the drug reaches to circulation. Have high first pass effect, 25% reaches to circulation. And it is excreted through urine. Then what are the therapeutic uses of this lyle solid drug? The therapeutic uses are according to its actions. That when it is used in the case of cardiac output decreases and uh, SA node activity decreases, so it is used as antihypertensive. Antihypertensive. How this propranolol will be as an antihypertensive? Propranolol as an antihypertensive drug. How it will be as antihypertensive? By decreasing cardiac output by decreasing total peripheral resistance, by decreasing sympathetic flow, by decreasing sympathetic flow and by decreasing renin release. Then in for renin angiotensin pathway will be decreased. So as an antihypertensive propranolol will decrease cardiac output, then total peripheral resistance, uh, sympathetic flow decreases and renin flow, renin release decrease, thus it acts as an antihypertensive. It is used in the case of migraine. 
Usually, when vasodilation occurs, it increases the pressure in the brain, and this propranolol, by causing vasoconstriction, is used in the case of migraine. It is also so used in angina pectoris. It is used in angina pectoris. It is used in myocardial infarction. It can be used in myocardial infection because catecholamines increases oxy oxygen demand. And while acting the propranolol diminishes or decreases the oxygen demand by the body or by the heart, thus it can be used in myocardial infarction. What are the adverse effects along with these effects of propranolol? As propranolol acts in the bronchioles called bronchoconstriction, so the one of the side effect or adverse effect is bronchoconstriction. Constriction. So we cannot you give it to the patient with asthma. We cannot give to the patient with coronary obstructive pulmonary disease. We should take care of the patient with COPD because it will block or it will constrict the bronchial smooth muscles. And it also causes the side effect. The next side effect is it causes arrhythmias. As it interferes with the pacemaker activity, so it will cause arrhythmias. So this arrhythmias can be treated that it should not be withdrawn instantaneously. I mean it should not be withdrawn suddenly. The withdrawal of propranolol should be slow. On the CNS it causes dizziness. It also causes lack of energy, hallucination and it also causes a visual disturbance. Now, the some are the drugs when given along with the propranolol will potentiate its action, means will enhance its effectivity and its action, and some are the drugs which it decreases its activity. So, we can classify the drugs as those which potentiate and those which inhibit. Those which potentiate are cymetidine. And in the case of inhibitors, that is the barbiturates. Inhibitors are barbiturates, phenytoin, and rifampicin. So, propranolol, when used along with rifampicin, phenytoin, and barbiturate, it will inhibit. Its action will be inhibited while be potentiated when used with cymetidine and fluoxetine. Clear to the propranolol? So we can proceed with the next beta blocker drug that is timolol and nadalol. As you said, the non-selective beta blocker drugs include propranolol, timolol, and nadalol. We have discussed propranolol. We will discuss timolol and nadalol together. So the drug is Pyrolol and Nadolol. Most of the actions are same because these are non-selective beta blockers, they are competitive antagonists, they have equal affinity for beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. So actions are almost same. They are anti-adducers, anti-hypertensive drugs because it decreases blood pressure. But they decreases the blood pressure over a long usage. When it is used over a long period of the time, then it decreases blood pressure and uses hypertensive drug. It also decreases cardiac output, decreases sorry, total peripheral resistance, thus it decreases blood pressure. The another significant use of timolol and nadolol is that it is used in open angle glaucoma. Open angle glaucoma is the most common type of glaucoma where the angle between the cornea and iris became increased. The angle is increased, there is increased production of aqueous humor. In open angle glaucoma, increase aqueous humor production but decreases drainage. So, timolol and adolol are used in case of open angle glaucoma and they cause the vaso 
constriction by acting on beta receptors. Thus, it decreases the production of aqueous humor and increases its drainage. Thus, we can treat open ended glucoma with tamalol and nadolol. So, it is also used in hypertension, it is also used in thymolol and nadolol. So, therapeutic uses are hypertension and open angle glaucoma. In open angle glaucoma, it treats, treats open angle glaucoma by decreasing the production of aqueous humor and increased drainage, but it does not alter the ability of eye to focus. The focusing ability of eye is not compromised and it does not change the pupil size. And this is mostly used when there is a chronic case of open angle glaucoma. What are the pharmacokinetics of these drugs? Thymolol and nadolol have a long duration of action. It has 3 to 6 hours, but nadolol has a long duration of action that is 14 hours. So it's the long duration of action of nadolol. What are the side effects? It's called bradycardia. As it decreases BP, decreases cardiac output, decreases heart rate, it causes bradycardia. This will cause bradycardia, ocular irritation. This will cause ocular irritation, bradycardia, and the most important is bronchoconstriction. So this, you do do this bronchoconstriction. We cannot use in those patients who are having yes asthma and coronary obstructive pulmonary. Disease. So all the beta non-selective beta blockers, these are antihypertensive, they are competitive, they act on both beta 1 and beta 2 receptors, they have affinity for both beta 1 and beta 2, they decrease blood pressure and, and they cause bronchoconstriction so cannot be used in COPD and asthma patients and nadolol and timolol is basically used for open angle glaucoma. So hopefully that is clear till here. We will continue with the next lecture, inshallah, with the selective beta blocker. Thank you so much.